Hello, in this video we are finally going to see this quadcopter flying. Um, if you've been following any of my previous videos recently you'll possibly be aware that I've been trying to use one of these um, NRF24L01 I think they are um, radio chips to control uh, along with an Arduino Pro Mini to control a quadcopter. Um, and I did that with a radio control car to test first, just to keep things safe. Um, but now we're ready to try flying this. Um, so it's all set up here, ready to go. And I was going to make a blog post about how I put this together, but I thought um, I might just slip some photos into this video. And then I got lazy and I thought I'd just show you on the video. So <clears throat> um, all the parts came from Banggood and when I totaled up the cost it was $123 for everything that you see here. So it's pretty cheap actually to, to put all this stuff together. That's including the Arduino and the NRF24 board. Um, so what it is is the frame and a set of um, <clears throat> motors and propellers and speed controllers that all came together. So the speed controllers are these <coughs> pink things on the bottom and I've just attached those to the frame with rubber bands um, they sit on there quite firmly it uh, works works well and the cape uh, the wires that came with them were quite long so I cut the wires that were coming out of here and then I cut some of the heat shrink off the speed controller and I soldered the motor connection directly onto the board of the speed controllers in there just to keep everything nice and tidy and that made everything a really nice length uh, to fit into the middle um, <clears throat> and in the middle there is a power distribution board with a step down voltage converter to convert the voltage from the battery which is going to be 7.4 volts or 8 volts around about there um, down to 5 volts because I was using a 5 volt Arduino to start with um, now I'm using a 3 volt Arduino so it didn't didn't really need to be done actually but um, it's nice to have that um, step down board you can't really see it in there but uh, I'll show you a photo of that here as it was when I put it on um, yeah so I didn't really need that but if I wanted to have um, maybe some FPV gear on, on here later that needed 5 volts or, or something else that needed 5 volts or something it would be handy to have. Um, <clears throat> so the brains of it all is on this side here in the inside the plastic case and that is a CC3D uh, otherwise known as open pilot copter control board and that was about $20 or $22 or something, very cheap for what you get I think. Um, and that connects by computer to USB so I cut a piece out of the frame here so that the USB cable can still fit in there. Uh, I actually had to cut the plug part of the USB to keep it narrow enough to fit but it fits in there. Um, and it's quite handy, it means I don't need to take anything apart to connect it to the computer. Um, and then I drilled some holes in the bottom there and I took some cables through to this side to power the Arduino. Uh, so that's an Arduino Pro Mini underneath and the radio board is sitting on top and it all sits in there nice and tidy. Um, that's about all there is to it really. And I was quite pleased, one of my goals was to try and keep it nice and slim. Uh, so you can see there the top is perfectly flat apart from the screws that stick out a tiny bit um, but that means you can put a battery on top quite easily or because the bottom is also flat you could put the, the battery on the bottom just as easily as well um, and it's all within about two centimeters in thickness so it's quite nice and slim <coughs> uh, this frame was uh, very cheap it's ten dollars great starter frame um, and I heard that these legs could fall out quite easily so I drilled a little hole in there and put a screw, it's not going to focus, but that's a little screw in there just to keep them from pulling out. 
um, but I haven't really needed to modify anything else about the frame. It's really, really strong frame. I think it would be able to withstand any crashes that it took. Uh, of course, you're going to break propellers and stuff, but um, I think the frame itself would be fine and it would protect all the insides of there as well. Uh, this plastic cover, by the way, was not included with the frame. I made that myself. I just cut a piece of plastic and fitted it onto there. Um, while I was waiting for the batteries, I got bored, so I tried to make everything look nice. Um, so that's about it for that. Um, the other things you would need <coughs> to fly this, of course, is the battery. I actually included the battery in that $123 um, costing. Uh, you also need a battery charger, which I got one of those for about $22. Um, I would not get that one again, maybe. I would probably go a little bit further and get one that's about $30, which is a bit nicer. Um, but it works okay. And you'll also need a little <coughs> battery alarm thingy. Like this. Uh, this is the one I use that's about $3 or something. And you just plug that into the... Um, balancing plug of your LiPo battery while you're running and it will make a loud beeping sound when the battery's one of the cells goes to three and a half volts to let you know to stop flying so you don't damage the batteries. Um, but all this stuff is pretty cheap. I, I was quite um, pleased to find out how cheap it was really. Um, another thing I got and this was also from Banggood, pretty much everything from Banggood. Um, it was the Mobius action camera and this is also really great value for money this was less than $70 it's like $68 or something I think um, but it takes pretty decent high-def pictures and um, what else is there that's about it really so we are ready to go and try this out oh but of course what I'm not telling you is I already tried it out a long time ago I've been flying this for a few weeks now um, what I wanted to do was make a video of my first test flight um, as I did with the car because that's kind of interesting. I think it's it's nice to have a video where the maker of the video is unsure about what's going to happen as well as the viewers. But uh, I didn't really have a good way to film it because I didn't have this Mobius camera at the time. Um, so I only had my phone and from my last video it was a real pain in the ass to um, try and prop it up on the park bench and stuff to film things but this has a nice little tripod and it can also be attached to the quadcopter because it's very light um, so I did not record the proper maiden flight of this well I did record it a little bit um, I'll just pop a little bit of that video in here for you now so you can see what that was like Yes, not very exciting, but that was the official maiden flight. Uh, all I was doing there is just checking that it could actually lift off and how much throttle it needed to lift off and if my directions for my controller were working properly and so on. <coughs> and Speaking of which, uh, I've got everything set up in here now. I had to completely gut the insides of this controller uh, and all I left was the electronics directly behind the control sticks and the switches. Um, still not using any of the switches, I just use the control sticks at the moment. But this is a much nicer controller than the old crappy one that I had. And you can see in there there's the Arduino Pro Mini and right behind it there is um, the another NRF24 board with a high power version and this funky antenna. Um, so that seems to be working great. It has a nice little carry support put around your neck. Um, anyway, that concludes the boring part of the video, but I just thought I'd go over all these, uh, the details of what I did just in case there may perhaps be somebody watching this video who is interested in Arduinos and electronics on the cheap and wireless links and quadcopters and that kind of thing. Um, so hopefully it wasn't too boring. Um, 
So the rest of the video, I'm just going to put in some video that I took earlier today down at my test site at the river. Um, I tried putting the Mobius onto the bottom there and taking some photo uh, video like that. Um, and I tried it a few days ago and it worked really well. And unfortunately when I tried it today, it was really crap. And I think the problem may be that the propellers were badly out of balance. Um, I got lazy and instead of taking them all off before I put it in my bag to carry down there, uh, I just took the bottom two off that sit on the bottom of my bag like that. And I left the top two on and they were sort of bumping around and getting squashed and while well, it was in my bag, I think. Um, plus they've, they've already been through some crashes. <laughs> um, <coughs> but the video quality that I got today was very bad, but I thought I'd leave it in instead of what I got a couple of days ago, because a couple of days ago the weather was really cloudy and dark and grey, and today it was nice and sunny. So I'll give you the nice and sunny footage instead. Well, here we are down by the river again. Slightly different place this time. Um, just by chance, a few weeks ago, I happened across this spot here where a local radio control aircraft club meets. Um, and this is actually the runway, this uh, patch of water here. Um, believe it or not, as fine as the weather looks now, it was pouring with rain a couple of hours ago as a typhoon was just passing by. And as is quite common, right after a typhoon we get really, really nice weather like this. Um, so yeah, it's not, not much of a, not a very flash spot, but um, it's kind of hard to find somewhere where you can fly without people bothering you. And it's a little kind of secluded, it's hard to find your way in if you didn't know where it was. And as you can see, uh, I had to ride through about a foot of water to get here today. And all of the wooden seats and things that we used to put things on while we're getting batteries ready and stuff have been washed sort of over there somewhere, I guess. I don't know, they don't, don't seem to be here anymore. You can see where they were. Anyway, um, so this is, uh, this is the thing here and we'll see how it flies. Like I said, this is not the first time I've flown it. Uh, it's probably about the tenth time now, I guess. So this video is not um, a made in flight video or anything, it's just to, just to prove that it works. This is just the, uh, the stock settings of the CC3D board. I have not felt the need to change anything because it seems to work fine. And my only other experience with flying quadcopters was the Hubsan X4. So as far as I know, um, it's doing everything it's supposed to. The response is fairly smooth. It's not very agile. This is full left and right roll. And that's about as fast as it can move. But um, <laughs> that's about as fast as I need it to move at the moment. But um, yeah, it's... Uh, Good solid radio connection, uh, everything looks good, and uh, I think we can call this part of the project a success. So let's try putting the Mobius onto the bottom of the uh, quadcopter there and see if we can get some slightly more interesting footage. Um, I don't have any proper mount for this so I'm just going to sellotape you right onto the base of the quadcopter there so it might be a bit wobbly and we might see quite a bit of jello effects I guess but uh, let's see how it goes.
Okay, you are now stuck to the bottom of the quadcopter. And let's see if I can do this without killing myself. Mm -hmm. 